instructions on 9.2 Taylor series. But before we get into that classwork, I want to actually show you the purpose of why we use Taylor series. So the Taylor series right here says that if I have two equations, let's say the y equals sine x is the original equation right there, and I have y equals x right here, we want to try to make this y equals x somehow close as possible to the sine graph right there. So obviously y equals x, the part that's going to be similar to the sine x is maybe that little distance right there in that slope right there. So then Taylor series says that I can have as a second equation, and if I put a second equation together, something like this, I'll have a negative x to the third, and next, negative x to the third is an S shape, but it's going the opposite direction. So notice that this opposite direction, now we're getting a little bit more closer to that sine wave right there, because now it's hugging this graph right there. And then, so the Taylor series says, now let's take it to the fifth, right? So if I take it to the fifth, notice that it's a positive S shape. We're going to have a little bit more to that sine graph. So that's going to be now take part of this right here. So that's still not enough of the exact sine uh, y equals sine x. So then we continue on and we take it to the seventh power. So now again, it's a negative on the seventh power. So we're going to go this direction, negative. So now we're getting a little bit more of the sine graph because it's from here to that graph right there. And if we take it to the next power, which is the ninth power, it's going to be positive. Notice that it starts to hug a little bit more of that sine wave right there, right? So now we want to take it to the eleventh power, and again, that negative on the eleven, so we go the opposite direction. Notice it's starting to form more closer to that sine wave right there, okay? Then we go into the thirteenth power. Oh my gosh, this is getting closer, right? But not quite there because we still have this last part right there that's still not quite touching that and then this as well. So if we get to the fifteenth power, it's pretty much on it, just a little bit probably on the ends of the tails right there. But when we get to the seventeenth power for sure, this is going to be more of the sine wave graph right here, okay? So that's what we're trying to do, is we're saying that we, we get an equation, we're going to try to get that as close as possible to the original equation, and in this case it was the sine graph. Now, this is going to be on page 487 if you want to actually look at that detail again. All right? The other one that you need to look at is on page 491, and that's the McLaren series. Now, there are several of these, and these are we're going to have a quiz on this, so make sure you start looking over them. But these are the patterns. So, for example, on 1 over uh, 1 minus x and then 1 over 1 plus x, the nice thing about it is they're pretty much the same, right? Except the equation right there. We have to start memorizing this because on the AP test, it makes it easier if you know the pattern for this. So, the difference between this is that if this is a minus, this is a plus, and then all of these are plus right there. So, that's the easy part to remember. And then we also have is this is a plus, then this is a minus on the first one right there. But in this case, it actually alternates. So for the pluses, it alternates. For the minus, it's all pluses right there. So you have to memorize that. And this is the general equation. So if you also know the general equation, it's going to help you out when we find the converging and things like that when we do later in this chapter. Okay? So that's this two part right there. The other one probably you should start memorizing is the sine and cosine because they're related to each other as well. So sine and cosine, the sine is going to be the x right there. The cosine starts off with a 1. Then the sine is x to the third. Notice, notice it's over 3 factorial. That little factorial is the exclamation mark, which is the like same thing as saying 3 times 2 times 1, right? It was factorial. The cosine is 2. Then we have a sine is 5, and then this is 4. So if you notice, the signs are odd. So this is like x to the first power right there. So this is odd. So that's 1, 3, 5. So obviously the next pattern will be 7, right? So it will be over 7 factorial as well. And then it also alternates from negative, positive, negative, etc. Okay? The cosine, it starts off with 0 because the x to the 0 power is 1, right? So that's going to be 0 and then 2, 4, etc. So you have to remember cosine is even powers, sine is the odd power. All right, so those are two things, and then also um, the ln and arctan, those are probably the common ones as well, so you want to memorize those. Now, the ln is going to be um, similar to, I would say, e, actually. Let's compare it to the e. So this is the ln, so ln is x to the first, x to the second over 2, but notice it's not factorials. The cosine and the sine have factorials, but this does not have factorial. So this is not a factorial, and then the 3 over 3, so then the next one will probably be, what, 4 over 4, etc. okay? 
Then we have his E's. So the E's actually, the difference between that one is that this is actually has factorial. So this is like one over one factorial, two over two factorial, plus three over three factorial, etc. So again, let me show that, uh, try to get that closer. So we have is then between the L and X, we start off with X to the first. E starts off with one right there, because zero, right? E to the zero is one, so that's right there. So then from there, we just kind of pretty much have a similar pattern. The only difference is then this one has factorial and this one does not have factorial, okay? And then the arc tangent, that's something separate. So arc tangent is x, and then we have is x to the third over three, x to the five over five, and again, it's not factorial right there, okay? So what I notice is that the ones that have factorials, um, we call it the pet. So p, p being the polynomial, E is the one, the next one, and then also trig functions. Those are the only ones that have factorials. Other than that, the other ones did not have factorials. This did not have factorial. This did not have factorial, and neither did, did this right here, okay? So now let's actually now go into the classwork and figure out how to do this. So given something like this, you're given an ex example L and X, one plus X at X equals zero, and the X is equal to zero is called the center. And so the part two of this video will have then when it's center equals something else. So in this case, all of the ones we're gonna do for this homework is gonna be when X is equal to zero. And they're gonna ask us to find some kind of number of order. So it'd be fourth order, fifth order, seventh order, something like that, okay? So what that means then is I'm gonna take this equation right here. The original part right there starts off with the zero is what we're substituting in. So the first part, this is the zero ln of zero right there. This is by substituting zero, ln of zero equals zero right there, okay? Then we're gonna start taking derivatives. So if I take the first derivative of ln, it becomes one over one plus x. If I substitute in zero into that x, because the center is zero, then it becomes one over one right there. If I take the second derivative, right, then we take the second derivative, do the same thing, third derivative, and then we get to the fourth derivative. And we know when to stop because it says right here by the fourth order, so I need to take the fourth derivative. Now, each of these numbers out here are going to be coefficients to the number that we just, or the equation that we're going to put for ln, okay? So we set ln, if you go back to this ln right there, it was x and then two over two, no factorials on this right here, okay? So what we're gonna do is then we're gonna take the zero right here. For right now, I just put zero so you can see this, but we're obviously not gonna put zero later on. So we're gonna put zero right there plus, and then the coefficient for this is one. So it's actually one x to the first over one, right? This is negative one right there, second uh, derivative right there, so that's negative one right there, x to the second over two, this is now the third derivative, so I use the two coefficient, two x to the third over three. And this is the fourth derivative, so negative six x to the fourth over four right there, okay? So if, it, if we asked to find the seventh, then obviously we have to take seven derivatives of this or whatever it's asking for. So this is the final answer right here, because then when we graph this out, we're saying that this right here is going to be closer to the equation that we're going to compare it to. But we're not graphing it, we're just finding out what an equation right there, okay? So let's take the next one. So the next one is sine of x right there. So sine of x right there, we're going to use um, seventh order, still at x equals zero is the center. So we're taking the derivatives, we're taking the first derivative, and then second derivative, etc. So we want to make sure then we use that um, chart, right, using the sine cosine chart. So I have is then, here's my chart, we have this cosine here, we have a sine x, negative cosine x, and then negative sine x. So when we go derivative, we go down, we go rotation-wise down. So since we're starting with sine up here, we're going to go down, that's going to give us a cosine right there, right? If I take the derivative cosine, it goes this direction, that's going to give us negative sine right there. If I have derivative of negative sine, that's going to give us negative cosine right there, and then sine, it goes back up, okay? So we're gonna take it to the seventh power, so we need seven derivatives from there. All right, so once we get the seven derivative, notice there's zeros. The zeros do not have any uh, values when we put it together in an equation, because obviously the coefficient zero doesn't exist, right, for the polynomial. So in this case right here, since we're doing sine, and we're doing sine right here, sine says I need factorials, so we're gonna do factorials for this. So the first one right there is that cosine is one. 
and it's the first derivative. So at cosine of 1, first derivative, I'm going to go x to the first all over 1 factorial. 1 factorial, same thing as 1. So then we go to the next one. Next one is the third derivative, right? So then that gives me a clue. That's x to the third. It's negative 1 right there, so that's why it's negative 1. And it's 3 factorial because of this 3 up here. The next one is now x to the fifth, so now it's positive 1, so that's positive 1 right there. So it's x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And then we have is x to the seventh, right, which is negative, all over 7 factorial. Okay? And then the last one example is the cosine. And let's say we have this 2x in the middle right there. It's different from this one because this was just sine x, but this is 2x right there. Now, the center is still 0 for this homework assignment. And we're going to find the fourth order derivative. So again, so the first one right there, we're doing the cosine. And I'm just leaving this right here as x is right there. And what we're going to do is then we're going to take each of those. Oops, let's go to the fourth right there. So we're going to take each of those and just basically find the coefficients right there. Okay? Now, after we do the coefficient, I'm going to put it together as the fourth right here, the polynomial fourth right there. And just right there, use the coefficients. 1, right? x to the 0 is 1. Then from here, this one right here will be second derivative, so it's negative, it's negative, x to the second over second factorial. And this is to the fourth, so then it's four over four factorial. Now the difference then with that two x is then using this right here, since it's cosine two x, anything that has an x in there, we're gonna put a parentheses of two x in there. Okay, so then that's the only difference with that. So if I know this part right here, then that's easy because then I can substitute in 2x at the end wherever there's x right there, okay? Also for the write-up right here, let me just point this out. If it is first derivative, we do like a little, a little um, pr prime right there, right? And then if it's second derivative, we do two primes, third derivative to the third prime. But then once you get to the fourth, we're actually going to put the index number four. And then uh, where was the other one was down here? So then it's, we take it to the fifth, sixth, and seven, et cetera. So we take the index number of those right there. Okay? So that's what the Taylor series is for when the center is equal to zero for this homework assignment.